Jack zone two, the rower. We're gonna row 500 meters, no matter what gender, unless the kids, they do 250. Let's talk about form. One, treat the rower like a deadlift. I'm gonna show you some movements as we go through the machines that are similar to the movement patterns of machines. For your row, you're gonna treat it like a deadlift. So I got a bar. When we're in the row, for deadlift, come down slow. Explode up. Come down slow. Explode up. The biggest mistake I see people making on the rower is they're going down fast, up fast, down fast, up fast, down fast, up fast. And they're not actually pulling hard. They're rushing back to the catch and then they're losing all their power. The fan only moves on the pull. So that's where we're gonna focus our explosiveness is the pull, not the return and the catch. A couple of common other mistakes, damper, that's on the side over here. The damper is the amount of wind resistance that gets in. 10 doesn't mean fastest. 10 just means how much air is in there. A lot of people make common mistake of having that too high. I used to be a meathead. I did 10 all the time. It was hard, but that's all I knew. And then I started studying people that were beating my ass in DECA and realized they're rowing at a lower damper, like a six. So now when I compete, I row at a six. If I'm doing a sprint, 10, like a hundred meter sprint or something, I might go up to like eight. But in general, I'm at a six for DECA strong. And if I'm doing a fit, then I might drop it down even lower to like a five. But lower damper, and I'm 235 pounds. So if you're not as big as me, even lower. Next is the cadence. I talked about the jackrabbit type of people on the rower. The strokes per minute is the measure of cadence. If your cadence is too high, you're doing a lot of work and you're just spinning your wheels and you're not going any farther. As we mentioned with the lunges, we want to be efficient so we can save the energy for later. We also want to do it on the row. So we want to pull hard and then recover slow. Pull hard, recover slow. So your strokes per minute in the top right hand corner of your monitor should be lower. So usually we shoot for 25 to 30. Higher than that's not bad, but it's taking you that many more pulls. Think about it this way. If it takes you two minutes to row 500 meters and it takes you 40 strokes per minute, that's 80 strokes to go 500 meters. Or if it takes you 25 pulls or strokes per minute, it takes you 50 pulls to do the same 500 meters of work. So do you want to do 50 pulls or 80 pulls? Do you want to do 30 extra pulls of work? I don't, I want to save the energy for the bike where it matters. So those are the big things with the rower. A huge time waste people have is transitioning from the lunges, 30. Put the ram down and then they come over here, they lollygag, sit on the seat. Now they're gonna adjust their foot straps. Now they're gonna loosen this up, get in here, here, tighten up. Oh, all right, let's go. All right, we'll change the damper. Maybe I'll turn the screen on. Maybe I'll, uh, all right, let me start pulling now. By that time they've wasted all 20, 30, 40 seconds, a minute. All that time goes against your time. Why would you want to waste all that time doing zero work? Beats me. Anyways, things you want to focus on. Before you race, chances are you're going to have a chance to set your rower. At least if you come to underdog, we make sure you set your rower because you got a chance. No one's on the rower when you're starting. You're giving them a chance to get far enough ahead. So first step, make sure your foot straps are long enough. If you wear a size 15 shack basketball shoe, then you should probably move it down to like a five or something. Test this out on your own, figure out what's best for you. If you're 5, 4, 11 and you have a size three shoe, let's move it up to zero or one. I like three. In the middle, it's not too big, not too small. That way the foot strap is right on the last loop of my shoelaces there. Now, some people prefer to have the straps tightened down. I used to do that until I figured out I didn't really need it, but whatever works for you. Either way, you wanna make sure these foot straps are loose enough so when you sit down, you can get your foot right into it. You don't wanna sit down and you're like, oh no. And you're digging them out, clocks on, wasting time. Also your anxiety is going up because you're racing. So make sure these loops are loose enough to get your foot into it and out. The damper I mentioned is on this side. Oops, 10 is at the top, one is at the bottom. Figure this out in training, wherever your damper is. You can go into the monitor, more options, display drag factor. 
and then you pull on that rower and it tells you what your drag is. Figure it out for what your body weight and size is. None of those make you a 10. The only reason you need 10 is if you're doing like a 15 second sprint. We're not doing that. We're trying to save energy, get 500 meters done as efficiently as possible. Order of operations. You finish your lunges, sit first. Until you fall off the seat and you straddle this little skinny thing, you won't understand the importance of the seat. So sit first. Now we need our feet in. So you can hold these. Now if you want to tighten them down. Now, finally, we can grab the oar and start rowing. Let me replace the oar, push down, or out. Here's what not to do, and I see people do this all the time. They sit, they grab the oar, then they're trying to sit, they're pulling, they're trying to get their feet in. Now, they've wasted the same 30 seconds, they've moved maybe five meters for what? Just to hold on to this thing, to have one less hand to get your feet into? Don't waste your time with all that. Next, rowing form. Sit tall, we talked about the deadlift, right? Sit tall, close to your shins, drive through the heels, full recovery flow, full recovery flow, full recovery flow. Notice my back is vertical. Low cadence. The only other thing I didn't mention is when you first start, you probably want to get a few quick pulls just to get the fan going. So you sit and strap. Now we settle in. Deep breath in, blow it out. Deep breath in, blow it out. Deep breath in, blow it out. Think of this as a rest station. What we want to do is control our breathing, which keeps our heart rate lower which spares our high explosive, high performance energy, glycogen, because we want to save that for later. On the row, watch the monitor for your meters. When it approaches 490, like 485 to 490, it's gonna coast. So all right, 485, put it in, pop out, button the seat, 500, and you're out. Those are my tips for the rower. So short recap on the rower, make sure you know your settings, Make sure you know your damper, but you need to know your race pace. How do I figure out my race pace, Kevin? That's a great question. Do a 2,000 meter time trial, set it in the monitor, 2,000 meters, row as hard as you can for 2,000 meters, stop, go throw up, get a drink, come back, look at your average pace per 500 meters in your 2,000 meters. That's your Dr. Strong race pace. If there's a lot of running and you're not a good runner, probably slow that down a little bit. That race, that pace is going to seem very slow, but that's what you want. You want to be able to row that as efficiently as possible during your deck of strong or deck of mile to save your energy for later in the race. The last reminder is master your transitions into and master your transitions out of the rower because that will save you minutes on the front and back end. And if you're really, really good, you can still save seconds because we get sloppy, we forget to adjust the straps or we start pulling and we forget to get in first. So master those and you're gonna be excellent at getting in and out of zone two.